This program is rated G and is suitable for general audiences. Fire up those mixers. This is Wall of Bakers, the ultimate baking competition where amateurs must rise to the occasion <laughs> by competing in front of their baking idols. There it is. <laughs> Four home bakers are about to be pushed to their limits through three rounds of sweet competition. Judging them is the wall stacked with the country's biggest names in baking. After each challenge, one home baker is eliminated. In the end, the wall declares the winner of the $10,000 prize. This is always the part where I'm freaking out. Who will crumble under the pressure? No, this guy cooks more than I wanted. And who will take the cake? OK, he's going. Oh, my god. Oh, my god. I'm Noah Cap. Welcome to Wall of Bakers. Amateur bakers often wonder how they would perform under the watchful eyes of the country's best chefs with a time limit on the fly. Did I mention the time limit? Well, today, four home bakers are about to get that chance, and one will walk away with $10,000. Let's meet the competitors. Sales leader and motorsport maniac, James Drake. Hello, James. Hello. I am originally from England. I started baking because I have two young children, and obviously they like desserts and sweet things. And now it's turned into something that I'm not known for. But is is James going to make that cake? Yes. Let's let's just get James to do it. What I want to bring to today's bake is that kind of love of my baking. So hopefully that shows. A sociology student who calls baking her love language, Danica Katani. Hi. As a student, it can be very stressful, and so I turn to baking as a stress reliever. I usually bake for my friends and family, and my brothers are definitely my harshest critics. In terms of, like, the delivery of the critique, I think the wall of bakers would be nicer than my brothers, so I'm feeling confident. An air traffic controller who's used to working on the fly, Tara Kratzman. Hey. When you're controlling airplanes, you're constantly thinking several steps ahead. That's helped me with baking, because it's like, OK, this needs to go in now, because that's next, and then that's next. To bake in front of all these chefs and have them critique your food, it will be so amazing. A finance guy who's passionate about butter, Ludovic Piejos. Hello. I'm from France, and my parents are from Martinique. I am competing because I want to showcase French Caribbean pastry. This is something that I haven't seen a lot in Canada, so I want to be able to showcase that to the world of bakers. James, Danica, Tara, Ludovic, are you ready to face the wall? Yes. Yes, yes ready. This is your wall of bakers. Lenore Johnson, Andrew Hahn, Dominic Giamarella, Christine Cushing, Kristen Hua, Elizabeth Charlton, Anna Olson, Ravina Oberoi, Tracy Mussolini, Ricardo, Amy Rosen, and Patrice Damel. Oh my gosh. It's like a first date. Everybody's so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Tara, I understand that you're an air traffic controller. Mm -hmm. Safe to say that you're good under pressure? Yeah. This, though, that's, this is another level. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's not keep the wall waiting. It's time for your first challenge. You each have that one treat in your repertoire that never fails to impress. The one that prompts the question, can I please have that recipe? <laughs> mm -hmm. In this round, you'll be making your crowd pleaser. This is your chance to show the wall who you are and what you bring to the bake. You've got 40 minutes on the clock, and your bake starts 
now. Seeing that wall of bakers, oh my word, they're gonna be tasting my food. I'm an amateur baker, they're professionals. That's a scary thought. My crowd pleaser is a strawberry shortcake cupcake with a vanilla sandwich cookie on the bottom, strawberry in the middle. I make the batter. I start with clotted cream mixed with some fine sugar. I use that cream because it just tastes fantastic. Chef Han, James using clotted cream in his cupcakes. What's that? Clotted cream is basically cream that's been curdled, essentially, but with the use of an acid, and it just gets it a real nice, rich, uh, velvety texture. This is typically used in England, so he has, like, integrated a part of his soul in that dessert. Which we love to see <laughs> here. Yeah. Ooh, chocolate. For my crowd pleaser, I am making a chocolate chip cookie with caramelized bananas with some toasted caramelized peanuts. This is my crowd pleaser because banana is used a lot in Martinique, caramel is something that is used a lot in France, and cookies is something that I discovered when I moved to Canada. And I'm adding dark rum for some kick. Awesome. Right now, I can see bananas and I can see rum. It feels like the Caribbean already. <laughs> I'm quite excited. <laughs> Hi, Tara. Hey, how are you? What's your crowd pleaser? It's basically a key lime pie that's layered in a glass dish, so you can see it, all the layers. I'm hoping if I have time to pair it with a rum cocktail. Well, and I know we'll the wall would enjoy that. <laughs> Perfect. I made my graham crumb, so I'm putting it in the oven, and then the next thing I have to do is make my lime curd. Chefs, what are the keys to a good key lime pie? You have to use a combination of zest and the juice to really draw out that big lime flavor. The blend has to be the right balance between lime, condensed milk, eggs. Baking, it always gets so tricky. That's the beauty of it. Because of the time constraints today, I'm going to actually put my lime curd in the baking sheet and bake it that way. She's putting the mixture on a sheet pan. What? Normally, you would pour it into your tart shell and bake it in the shell. Right. Or you could do it stovetop like a custard. So be interesting. It'll bake faster. It will, it will bake faster, definitely. For my crowd pleaser, I am making a toffee bar with butterscotch and chocolate topped with berry compote. These bars were inspired from toffee cookies that my family really likes. Chef Cushing, Danica doing a toffee butterscotch bar. Can it get too sweet? 100%. You're dealing with brown sugar, butter, more sugar. Did I mention there's sugar in it? Danica actually is going to be serving those with a fruit sauce. That could be a good balance. It's definitely going to contrast that sweetness in the toffee. We're going to find out. Let's see. 15 minutes left. I am adding strawberry ice cream into some buttercream to make the icing for the cupcake. So it gives it that pink color, gives it a lovely light flavor. Chef Oberoi, yes. uh, James right now added ice cream into his buttercream. What are your thoughts on that? I'm just confused, because how stable is that going to be? Is that going to melt? Is that going to be more buttercreamy with just the flavor of the ice cream? If it's just a flavor thing, then why didn't he just put strawberries in? Interesting. Yeah. Home bakers, we're under 10 minutes. Oh, no. This got cooked more than I wanted. I pull up my lime curd, and it is overcooked. It's very lumpy. I start whisking it because it should help eliminate some of the lumps. And then I put it into the flash chiller because that should instantly stop the cooking and cool it down really quick. Bakers, we're under five minutes. Caramel, caramel. Chef Johnson, uh, Ludovic yeah. is doing some caramelized bananas well on the skewer. Feeling good about that choice? I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. I'd want that whole banana to be caramelized. I wouldn't want a caramelized outer ring and then no cooked banana in the center. Two minutes left in this round. This compote is too sweet, and I need something to make it a little bit more sour. So I add raspberries. Bakers, 30 seconds. She's making a drink. 
Wow. Good job, guys. Good job, guys. Count it down, wall, let them know. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Woo! Hands up. That's time, Bakers. Wow. Well done. <laughs> Bakers, it's time to face the wall. Here are the four chefs judging your crowd pleasers. An internationally celebrated TV personality and author of more than 10 best-selling cookbooks, Chef Anna Olson. An award-winning pastry powerhouse known for his diverse and inventive creations, Chef Patrice Damers. An innovator of fusion baking and one of the first to bring Japanese-inspired desserts to Toronto, Owner of Millie Desserts, Chef Kristen Hua. The owner of Slow Dough Pastry, a boutique bakery specializing in small batch baked goods, Chef Elizabeth Charlton. James, Danica, Tara, and Ludovic. You've made your crowd pleasers. Now, let's see if they please this crowd. Danica, please join us. I'm worried about the compote because I don't know if I cut the sweetness enough. I'm just really hoping that they like my food. Danica, tell us what you've prepared for your crowd pleaser. So I made toffee bars with chocolate, butterscotch, slivered almonds, and I made a berry compote, and I just put it all together. The flavor of those bars is really, really great, but could have put a bit more salt. When you work with dough like that that are quite sweet, salt's gonna help to balance everything. Your chocolate chunks were a great size. I got that toffee flavor. I liked your compotes, but just a little too sweet. I love the concept of a grown-up cookie bar, but this needs a little bit more salt. Like a salted caramel would have been great. Thank you, Danica. You can head back. Tara. I made a key lime pie varine. So you've got layers of graham, lime curd, and then a mascarpone whipped cream. And then your cocktail is kiwi and rum. Cheers. I loved the crumble. And your mascarpone cream, I think, was a brilliant call to give it a little more richness to play against that intense key lime filling. I did find it a touch overcooked, but that lime really popped through. Your whipped mascarpone, phenomenal. Ethereal, light and airy. This is a beautiful dessert. It was delicious. It's so well balanced and it comes together wonderfully. Well, it's a pretty elevated technique, I think. And this was divine and I've almost drunk the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank you. James. Today I present a strawberry shortcake cupcake. I made this for a nephew's birthday party. Everybody finished them, so from that day on, I have to make them every birthday. It was kind of like opening a present. You know how to balance colors, you know how to make things visually appealing. I can't not like it, it just, it brings up the child in me, so <laughs> good job. Thanks, Chef. I love the way you put like fresh strawberry in it but I have a bit of an issue with the, the cookie at the bottom. I think it's a bit thick for the proportion of the rest of the cake, and because it's sandwiched with sweet filling also, brings more sweetness to everything. Right. The cookie, it's a tad sweet, but a kid likes that, I know that for sure. Yep. You've put the accent of the uh, mint in here, but touch a lemon as well, and that too helps with sweetness. Thanks, Chef. Thank you, James. Thank you. Ludovic. For you chefs, I made a chocolate chip cookie and then I caramelized banana and I topped it with caramelized peanuts. 
The banana, it's the uh, most popular fruit in Martinique. And in France, I used to make caramel everywhere. So it's a combine of my journey. <laughs> it's really, really, really good. The addition of like sea salt on top is like perfect. It really balances the sweetness of the cookie. You did a great move of adding some acidity to the caramel so it's not too sweet either. And great use of flavor and spices. Thank you, Chef. The cookie is crispy on the outside, very soft on the inside. And the banana, I enjoyed the flavor. But maybe caramelize them not on the stick. You might get a more even cook. The cookie is very tasty. I really like the texture. And the combination of flavors are beautiful together. Thank you, Chef. All right, chefs, you've tasted all four crowd pleasers. I'll ask you to make your way back up to the wall. Now it's time to find out which three amateur bakers will be moving on to the next round and who will be eliminated. Chefs, have you made your decision? Yes, we have. Tara, you really impressed us with the textures and tastes in your key lime verine. Congratulations, you had the best crowd pleaser and you're moving on to the next round. <laughs> Ludovic, we appreciated the beautiful simplicity of your cookie dessert. Congratulations, you're also moving on to the next round. Thank you. That means Danica and James, one of you is moving on to the next round and one of you is heading home. Danica, your cookie bar had great potential, but it needed some technical tweaks to take it over the top. James, your cupcakes were playfully presented and they had good texture, but we could have done without the cookie at the bottom. The baker moving on to the next round is... James. Danica, the wall is spoken and you have been eliminated. I just want to say thank you for this opportunity to everybody. This is just a learning experience. Thank you, Danica. Being here and having these chefs taste my treats was kind of a dream come true. I am leaving here today with tons more knowledge and a great experience. James, Tara, Ludovic. Congratulations, you've all made it through to the second round. And you're now one step closer to the $10,000 prize. In this round, you'll be granted access to a place that our chefs hold near and dear to their hearts, their pantry. Bakers, in this round, you'll be creating a dish using two ingredients that are staples in the pantry of one of our chefs. She makes one-of-a-kind cake dreams come true as the owner of Len Joe Bakes, Chef Lenore Johnson. Chef Lenore, she's an amazing baker. It's inspiring. Hi, Noah. Hello, Chef. Hi, home baker. Hi. Hello. Chef Johnson, shall we show our home bakers the two ingredients in your pantry? Absolutely. The two ingredients that I always have in my pantry are pecans and blackcurrant jam. Blackcurrants in Europe are known as cassis, and they make a really great jam. If you imagine a blackberry and a blueberry, combine them together, you'll almost get the flavor of a blackcurrant. And preserving allows us to really capture the fruit at its prime. Pecans are high in fat, so they toast beautifully. Once toasted, they can take on a flavor similar to popcorn. Pecans are really versatile. There's almost no flavor profile that doesn't benefit from being used with pecans. Home bakers, in this challenge, you must create a dish that showcases both of Chef Johnson's ingredients. Whoever makes the least impressive dessert will be eliminated at the end of the round. There's 40 minutes on the clock, and your bake starts... Yeah, right now. <laughs> Jam. 
Blackcurrant jam. If you don't know it, you could get in your head about it, but there is a familiarity to some of the berries that you had mentioned. All the bakers have to do is taste it. Super tart, super fresh. That's good. I'm making a Swiss roll. I think it's a perfect vessel to incorporate both ingredients. I'm gonna fill it with a blackcurrant jam, cream cheese icing, and roasted pecans to give it a bit of crunch. It's definitely gonna impress the judges. Tara, I'd like yeah. you to meet Chef Johnson. Hi, Hi it's Tara. nice to meet you. Same. Tell us what you're making. So I'm going to make the mixed berry and pecan crumble. And I'm also hoping to make ice cream with a swirl of the jam wow. through it. Incredible. So that's the hope. The hope. That's yeah. the hope. These are our goals. <laughs> Good to have goals. Good luck, Tara. Thank you. Growing up in Newfoundland, we eat a lot of these simpler desserts, like crumbles. I'll pair it with other fruits, blueberries and blackberries, and the blackcurrant jam. This is something that I would have at home, so I want to kind of take these chefs there with me, just with their ingredients. Ludovic, I'd like to introduce you to Chef Johnson. Hi, Chef Johnson. Hi, nice to meet Ludovic. you. Hi, Ludovic. Nice to meet you as well. Can you walk us through what you're making? I'm making black currant and pecan tart with a sweet crust and a pecan and almond paste. And then I will top it with black currant jam. Fantastic. Have you worked with black currants before? Never. I need to taste it, actually. So I'll taste it. <laughs> That's a good strategy, yes, to taste it. Taste it. <laughs> yes, I will. <laughs> there it is. Oh Enjoy Ooh. the taste and good luck. The blackcurrant jam is something that I want to add on top of my tart with some fresh blackcurrant. And for the pecan, I'm making a pecan and almond paste to elevate the pecan. Chef de Mer, Ludovic is baking his tart shell with the filling inside. Usually, I prefer to blind bake, to cook only the crust to have a nice golden color and then add my almond cream in it. But he didn't have the time to do that, so he's cooking both at the same time. But we're not losing hope. <laughs> 16 minutes to go, bakers. Not stressing at all. I'm cooking my pecans. My Swiss roll is still in the oven. Now I have to make my cream cheese filling. Oh, my goodness, the cake is in the oven still. Chef Johnson, a concern. Yeah, my concern is the sponge cake for James's Swiss roll. When you make a sponge cake for a Swiss roll, it needs to be flexible. The way that it's flexible is that it's like barely baked so that you can roll it without it cracking. It needed to be out three minutes ago. I have overcooked it. Oof. I'm not feeling good about this. I don't think I have enough time to actually bake another one. I'm hoping it's still soft enough to roll. This is always the part where I'm freaking out. I'm not feeling good about this Swiss roll. I have overcooked it. God. It's not cracking. We were just expecting a total disaster, but it didn't happen. Nine minutes, 50 seconds oh, to go. Shh, shh, it's too late now. I take my tarts out of the oven and I see that they are not fully baked yet. The crust looks a little lighter than I would normally go for it. I cannot fix it because I don't have time. Just over five minutes on the clock, Baker. Cinq minutes, cinq minutes, cinq minutes. I need to focus on my French meringue because now it needs to be perfect. No errors. Chef Olsen, Ludovic, working on a French meringue. You take room temperature egg whites, whip yeah. them, and slowly add granulated sugar as it's whipping. Oh, yes. It is shining. That's what we want to see. Oh, most definitely. I have not used liquid nitrogen before. This is a first. The riskiest part of this dish is the ice cream. I want kind of soft vanilla ice cream with a, a black currant swirl going through it. And I just make an absolute and utter mess. 
Oh, did your ice cream just melt? More liquid nitrogen. More, more. More, more, Tara. I'm really worried. <sighs> I need to figure this out now. One minute, 30 seconds. Uh... Oh, my God. Finally, it comes together. She did it. She did it. Nice, Tara. It's not exactly the way I want it. I wanted a swirl, but I got just black and ice cream. Yeah. This is it, home bakers. Home stretch. You've got to make it happen. The jam. Oh, my gosh. Come on, guys. Let's like bring it down. Here we go. Roll. Count it down. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. one. Hands up. That's time, Bakers. <laughs> bakers, it's time to face the wall. In addition to Chef Johnson, here are your judges for this round. A culinary icon, household name, and author of Fearless in the Kitchen, Chef Christine Cushing. Specializing in sourdough breads and Italian pastries, as the owner of Christie's Bakery in Saskatoon, Chef Tracy Muzzolini. He turns classic desserts into works of art at restaurant Pearl Morissette, Chef Dominic Giamarella. Bakers, you got to take a trip through Chef Johnson's pantry. Now, it's time to see what you've made using black currant jam and pecans. Tara. I made a mixed berry and pecan crumble. It has black currant jam, blueberries, and blackberries. And I use liquid nitrogen to make a black currant ice cream. That is the crunchiest, crispiest topping. With the pecans, it definitely works. You do get like kind of that popcorny flavor, which is delicious. Now, you were intending on doing a swirl of the ice cream? It was supposed to be a swirl. Okay. You do get kisses through. The texture is beautiful. It's not icy at all. It's a great representation of the pantry for sure. Thank you. The crumble on top, I like the different sizes. Bright, tart, not too sweet. This is hitting all my favorite notes. I love your choice of fruit in addition to the black currant. One question for you, how much are you charging for this crisp? <laughs> Tara, thank you very much. Thank you. Ludovic. For you chefs, I made a pecan and a blackcurrant tart. I topped it with fresh blackcurrant, blackcurrant jam, also a French meringue and some toasted pecan. The flavor is fantastic, but unfortunately, your tart, it's underbaked. I just wish it was cooked a little bit longer, but you really get this burst of fresh cassis when you eat it, and then it kind of gets into the jam, and then it finishes pecan. That cassis connects all the flavors together. Like, you really feel the, the tang and that beautiful fruit. The flavor of your pecan and almond cream is phenomenal. I'm not sure why I've never replaced almond with pecan before, but I will now. I loved it, so thank you. Thank you, Chef. Thank you, Ludovic. You can make your way back. James. So I've made a Swiss roll filled with blackcurrant cream cheese icing with some pecans to give it a bit of a crisp. Conceptually, I think you are on the right track, but this cake, unfortunately, is a bit overbaked. Actually, we were all very surprised that it still rolled. When I think of a jelly roll, I really want moist cake, so even taking the cream cheese and folding in a chantilly cream would bring a little more moisture to the cake. I am so glad that you made a jelly roll. This is something that my grand would make for Sunday or any day, really. <laughs> but there's so much cake and so little filling. I also didn't really taste the pecans, which was weird because I saw you put them in. You could have left them much bigger. Chefs, you've had a chance to taste all three dishes. I'll ask you to make your way back up to the wall. And bakers, it's time to find out which two of you will be moving on to the final round and which one will be eliminated. Chefs, have you made your decision? Yes, we have. Tara? 
Your crumble was a wonderful representation of my pantry. Congratulations, you made our favorite dessert and are moving on to the next round. James and Ludovic, one of you is moving on to the final round and one of you is heading home. James and Ludovic, one of you is moving on to the final round and one of you is heading home. James, you had the right approach with your jelly roll, but the cake was overcooked and there wasn't enough filling. Ludovic, the restrained beauty of your tart really hit the mark, but your crust needed more time in the oven. Ludovic, you are safe. Thank you. James, the wall is spoken and you have been eliminated. Thank you for having me. Thank you to the chefs for all the tips that uh, I can take back to my kitchen and good luck to these two. It's been a great experience to meet the wall. I learned that under pressure, I can bake. So today has been pretty awesome. Home bakers, congratulations. You've made it to the final round. At the end of this challenge, the wall will declare one of you the winner and you'll go home with $10,000. For your final challenge, you'll take inspiration from one of our chefs to create a plate that is truly bakery worthy. He's considered Quebec culinary royalty, an iconic cookbook author who brings families to the table one meal at a time, Chef Ricardo. To have Chef Ricardo do a challenge for us, it's amazing. The joy that he brings to what he does is contagious. Hello, Chef. Hi, Noah. Hello, Bakers. Hi. Hi. Chef Ricardo, yes. shall we take a look at what you've brought us? Please do. This is my caramel popcorn cake with salted caramel and salted peanuts. Wow. <laughs> There's layers. White milk chocolate ganache with peanut butter, topped with salted caramel. When I look at this cake, I'm transported to a carnival with all the bright lights and the music and the smell. Bakers, you've seen Chef Ricardo's caramel popcorn cake. For your final challenge, you'll need to create your own bakery-worthy dessert inspired by the feeling of a carnival. There's $10,000 on the line, 40 minutes on the clock, and your bake starts now. When I think of carnival, I think about music and circus. I used to go to circus as a kid, a lot of fun. So my plan is to make a great circus tent. I have to make the inside and decoration on the outside. Ludovic, I'd like to introduce you to Ricardo. How are you, Ludovic? I am good. What are you going to bake? I'll be making a kind of a softer chocolate cake, almost uh, molten. And I will top it with uh, a crepe, and then I will top it with some strawberries and a whipped cream as well. That's a big carnival dessert. <laughs> That's a big job. Good luck. Thank you very much. <laughs> when you walk into a circus, the tent is dark. So in order to feature that, inside the tent will be my chocolate lava cake. I made lava cake before, and it's always a different result. But in order to be Terra, I have to take risks. It's the final round. I have to go all in. Chef de Mers, Ludovic doing a lava cake, but with a crepe on top, playing the part of the big top tent. Pretty creative, for sure, yeah. How much technique will be involved in pulling that off? When the lava cake is cooked, usually you don't move it too much, like it's pretty fragile. If he tries to wrap it in a crepe after, it can be dangerous, for sure. Tara, I'd like you hey. to meet Ricardo. Hi, Tara. What are you going to bake? One of the things that my son absolutely loves is churros. So I'm going to do a slightly more adult take. I'm hoping to do a chocolate ganache as a dipping mm -hmm. sauce for them. And if I've got time, I want to do an espresso martini. Wow. <laughs>
but we'll see if it's time. My goodness. <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> sounds like a plan. Good luck, Tara. Thank you. Good luck. First, I'm making the churros. I start by making a pate choux. Chefs, what is a pate choux? It's a very quick pastry. You have water and milk, then you add butter to it and flour, you stir it, and you cook off the excess moisture. Then you generally take it to a paddle, add your eggs one at a time until it just kind of releases, and then you have the perfect pate choux. It's the third round, and I have to stick with my theme. I'm adding spiced rum, my cake batter. Every course must have rum. Mm -hmm. It'll be good. I'm going to show who I am and use rum everywhere. <laughs> this is some cayenne. Adds a little bit of spice. Normally, churros get tossed in a cinnamon sugar. I want to make it more of an adult dish. Chef G. Morella, uh, Tara, adding in cayenne. Bit of a spicier churro. Got you excited? Yeah, chocolate and spices is kind of a great thing. The chocolate will act on your tongue as a protection a little bit, and you'll get the flavor of the cayenne. I think it's smart. I just hope there's more to it than just a churro and a chocolate sauce. Chef Olson, uh, getting our first look at Ludovic's molten cakes. Feeling good? I'm more concerned about his timing to make crepes. Crepe time. When you make crepes, usually the first crepe is a fail. But I don't have time for that. The pressure is on. I have 12 chefs watching me. Looks like he knows what he's doing. This is the moment of truth. I have to get this right. OK, he's going. Oh my god, oh my god. It's time to flip the first crepe. If the crepe sticks, then it would break during the flipping process. I have to get this right. Whoa! Oh! <laughs> He's smiling. He knows it was good. My first crepe was a success. No breaking. This is carnival. We have to have fun, entertain everybody. OK, here we go again. This is a carnival. I know. This is like a circus. <laughs> Four minutes and 30 seconds to go. I finished my churros and my chocolate ganache, and now I'm just making my espresso martini. I have to do each drink individually. It's taking me forever. She's making each cocktail one by one in a baking competition. Make me something else. Make, make two dips. Make three. It's a missed opportunity. I made all of my crepes. Yes. And my lava cakes are perfect. One minute, 30 seconds. Where's the tent? Where's the tent? I feel like Ludovic has a lot to do still. I have to build my tent, adding the crepe. I have to make some decoration on the outside. It's a bit of a circus in here. It is it? a circus. <laughs> 15 seconds on the clock. Oh, my goodness. Oh, boy. $10,000 on the line. Five. Four, three, two, one. That's time. I look at my dish and it's not vibrant. It doesn't have that instant draw. I'm not feeling good about this. Bakers, it's time to face the wall. In addition to Chef Ricardo, here are your final round judges. The owner of Just Cakes Bake Shop in Vancouver, known for her extravagant custom cake creations, Chef Ravina Oberoi. Infusing European pastries with the flavors he grew up with in Vancouver's Chinatown, the owner of Queen Cafe, Chef Andrew Hahn. Cookbook author and owner of the famed Rosen Cinnamon Buns, Chef Amy Rosen. Ludovic. For me, carnival means also circus. So I've made a crepe circus hand, and inside you have a chocolate cake, and I top the crepe with whipped cream, some pistachios, and a strawberry on top. A circus tent, when we enter, it's usually dark, and that's the reason why I made a chocolate cake inside. 
Obviously, you have a lot of talent to flip and crisps. <laughs> you could be part of a circus, the flipping guy. They're super smooth. The batter is perfect. It's a very good crab. It really captures that feeling of excess and of excitement. And I was excited to get this on my plate. Just theatrics of opening up that cake and having that gooey center. You had strawberry on there, you had the vanilla whip, and then you elevated a little bit with the thoughtfulness of the pistachio. The flavors played really well together. It was really enjoyable to eat. Wow, thank you, chef. <laughs> this is extremely inspired, and I love the taste, and I love your enthusiasm, and I love this dish. Thank you. Thank you. Tara, please join us. We go to the carnival frequently. This is my family's experience on a plate. Spicy churros, chocolate ganache as your dipping sauce, and the drinks and espresso martini. Your churros are good, but when we think carnival, we think grandiose, we think extravagant. I was a little bit disappointed to see them just in a cone with one dipping sauce. Moreover, as much as I enjoy this cocktail, I think that misses the mark with the carnival theme. When you think about a carnival, you think lights, action, mm -hmm. so much stimulation. And for me, this was just kind of white on white on a white ramekin with a sauce. It fails to visually take me to the carnival. I would be a liar saying I didn't like them. I mean, <laughs> I will finish their plates. <laughs> but I would have loved to see a lot of churros and more cayenne. Yes. I want the excess of mm -hmm. all of this. Thank you. Based on that last dish, this is going to be tight. I'm exhausted, but I gave everything and I'm super happy with my last dish. I definitely feel that it's like 50-50. Chefs, it's time to decide who will win the $10,000 prize. Who is the best home baker? Ludovic, in each of the three challenges, we were having desserts that meant a lot to him. And we're seeing more growth and improvement. That's what excites us. Even though Tara won the first two, coming into round three, I felt they were evenly matched. While Ludovic was creative, the technical skill that Tara has is astounding. She has an understanding of flavors and a sophistication that I think Ludovic does not have. But in this third round, Tara made cocktails one at a time. It was a really poor use of time, and she could have done so much more to elevate the churro. She didn't reach beyond what she knew she could do. But with Ludovic, you get a tent in a circus. He really created a, a narrative and a story that was so inspiring to me. I was like, this is crazy. And the lava cake was great. The balance of chocolate and sugar was fantastic. These two, I believe, were so well matched. It's tough. Tara and Ludovic, you both impressed the wall of bakers. Tara, you always had a plan. You moved with purpose and presented the chefs with thoughtful dishes that demonstrated a high level of technique. Ludovic, you were creative, told stories, and executed well-composed desserts with standout flavors. There can only be one winner. The winner of Wall of Bakers and $10,000 is... Ludovic. Congratulations. <laughs> Oh my gosh, thank you. I just won Wall of Bakers. I have to tell my parents. Tara, you should feel unbelievably proud. I made it to round three, which is ridiculously exciting. It was so much fun. It's been a once in a lifetime. I will take all of your input back home in Saskatoon, so thank you so much for the experience. Congratulations, Ludovic.
If you don't know what to do today, just keep it in your mind. Forget the hustle and bustle, pretend to snooze and relax. If you don't know what to do today, start a game on mind. Ignoring deadlines and all obligations. Don't rush, take your time, it's your day. Look, the comfy couch is calling your name. The quiet room is holding you back. The morning sun rises over the town. If you don't know what to do today, just keep it in your mind. Forget the hustle and bustle, pretend to snooze and relax. If you don't know what to do today, start a game online. Ignoring deadlines and all obligations. Don't rush, take your time, it's your day. Look, the comfy couch is calling your name. The quiet room is holding you back. The morning sun rises over the town. If you don't know what to do today, just keep it in your mind. Forget the hustle and bustle, pretend to snooze and relax. If you don't know what to do today, start a game online. The living room towards the evening is cozy and warm. I want you to enjoy it, it's your space to own. The latest playlist is playing your tunes. Look, the soft pillow is asking you to stay. The playful cats are keeping you home. Forget the hustle and bustle, pretend to snooze and relax. If you don't know what to do today, start a game online. The morning sun rises over the town. Don't get pulled into the busy rush. It's okay to leave the chores for another day. Because I want you to enjoy this lazy time. The morning sun rises over the town. If you don't know what to do today, just keep it in your mind. Forget the hustle and bustle, pretend to snooze and relax. If you don't know what to do today, start a game unwind. The morning sun rises over the town. If you don't know what to do today, just keep it in your mind. Forget the hustle and bustle, pretend to snooze and relax. If you don't know what to do today, start a game unwind. Sweet pain, pain so sweet. 
I'm addicted, can't break the chain, chain to the beat. Takes me high, lift off my feet. Stuck in your sweetness, can't escape, no escape. Holy molasses, my heart's a mess. In this state. Sky up, 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 sugar rush, heartbeat loud. 